I'm still after that elusive flathead, bro. That's just really kind of starting to bug me now. Yeah, you. What the? Whoa! What the? It's a tiny flathead. Dude! An itty bitty. Stop it! <laughs> On a piece of wood. You would catch a tiny flathead. <laughs> I can't even catch a flathead. Hilarious. This is ridiculous. I'm still after a flathead. Asa can't catch enough of them. <laughs> Get out of here. Get your flathead out of here. Ace is hooked up again. What's this on, bro? It's on a piece of crappie. Nice. Full circle of life. Guys. I'm going to jab at him with the net. <laughs> oh. oh, it's a tank. Oh, it's a tank. Yo! <laughs> Dude, look how... Oh my gosh! Look at them! This is the this might be my personal best trip. Dude! <laughs> Guys, look! Wow! Look at <laughs> Dude, that thing's like look how wide <laughs> that is! Oh my gosh! Yeah, this is like a catfish on roids, bro. <laughs> like, do you even lift? <laughs> this one does. <laughs> Good <laughs> knit! Got him! Oh, nice. Nice hooks in that. There he is. Yeah, he did. Right in that deep channel. There she is. Nice cat. Nice sized catfish. It's a pretty one. Probably a good five pounder. Alright, spunky little guy. He'll go four to five pounds. That's perfect. That's a good eating size. It's been about three hours. I was actually just complaining. I haven't had uh, haven't had a bite in a while. Scrappy little catfish, but that's a good eating size right there. We'll get some good fillets off that one. Hook right in the bottom of the lip there. Fantastic. Got him. There we go. Bring him up this way. There we go. Nice little, nice little catfish, pretty one. We'll throw him in the live well, probably call him. Meat will be nice and tender on that one. Check this out, one of the catfish burped this up. It's actually a baby catfish. There's the little spike right there. There's the flat head. But I mean, look at that, that's, that's four inches long. Fresh meat all on it, he got Ed up. He never made it to adulthood. So one of these guys burped him up. I mean, that's a nice sized piece of fish right there. Just thought that was pretty cool. So the catfishing was rough. I mean, it was like one catfish an hour and we were out there for seven or eight hours. And I think that's about what we caught, seven or eight catfish. But we were able to get a couple fillets. I was able to bring a couple fillets home. I did have the crawdad traps out and I've actually done pretty well for myself. As you can see right here, I've got a good probably 20 crawdads, maybe 20 to 25 crawdads in there. Some real nice ones too. Look at that little piggy there. So uh, this will be perfect, perfect size gumbo for uh, just feeding myself. So I'm pretty happy with that. So let's get these bad boys home. Let's get the fillets out and let's get cooking. All right, after a few minutes of cooking, everybody's looking nice and red. Let's pull these bad boys out of their hot tub. Throw them all on the plate. Now it's time to get them all peeled. All 
All right, check that out. Got a nice bowl of tail and claw meat from those crawdads. That's gonna go perfectly with that catfish and that gumbo. All right, so we're on the home stretch. This last part, we're going to add my roux. And basically all this is, is just canola oil and flour. And I already made this up um, about an hour ago on the stove top. And I did about an eighth of a cup of each because this is gonna be a smaller portion since it's just me eating this. Um, and you really have to watch this part because this, you do not want this to burn. If this burns, then the whole thing is ruined. So we're gonna get this in to our pan here. And you wanna constantly stir that bad boy because you really, really do not want it to burn. What we're gonna do is add our veggies. And all we have here are whoo, onions, peppers. Um, we also have some uh, celery in there as well. We're just gonna keep stirring that bad boy. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna start to kind of make its own sauce. Keep going at that right there. Almost kind of sauteing it. Get the rest of this out. We're also gonna add some sausage. Some more hearty flavor in there. All right, so we've let that saute for a little bit. Now the next thing I'm gonna add is one and one third cup of chicken broth. And we're gonna add this slowly, stirring it in slowly. looking real good we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of that there we go and I saute my peppers and onions for just a little bit but I usually under saute them because I like that crunch in my in my gumbo it's looking real good so what I'm also gonna add to this mixture are some diced tomatoes. Now normally you also add another half cup of water, but because these tomatoes already come in a watery, you know, in a watery can, I don't have to uh, add that other uh, half cup of water. So I'm just gonna put all that in nice and easy. Again, just, you have to be here. You cannot walk away from the gumbo. You gotta be right on top of it. All right, and one of the last parts we're gonna add into here is actually just a mixture of salt, dash of cavenders, a little bit of Cajun seasoning, um, some gumbo filet. Also, we've got some garlic powder and some sugar in there. And we're just gonna kind of slowly dump that in just a little bit and we're gonna slowly stir it around. So I'm also going to add these catfish chunks uh, at the same time as I'm putting my seasonings in. Um, and these catfish chunks have actually been bathing in some Sprite uh, for about the past hour and a half. And I like that Sprite because I feel like it just adds, adds a little bit, of, uh, little bit of sweetness to the meat. Maybe tones down some of the uh, fishy taste. Catfish can always be a little bit uh, hit and miss depending on what they've been feeding on, it seems like, and where you're catching them, whether the river's dirty or, or clear and clean. Just keep adding all that in. Now, I am going to add those crawdads at the very last, because remember, we've already cooked the crawdads. So, I don't want to overcook them. They don't need to be cooked too much more. I just want to, I'm going to probably add them in like the last five minutes so they can soak up some flavors of this gumbo. Look at that. Oh man, guys, it is smelling so good out here. I'm super jacked for this. So I've stopped adding firewood to my fire because I wanna reduce the heat a little bit and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. But you can still see there's some bubbles coming up in there. And after about 10 minutes, we're gonna add the crawdads, let it simmer for about another five minutes and we'll be ready to rock and roll. All right, time to add those crawdads. Perfect. Stir those in. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm getting so hungry doing this. This is terrible. I could never be like a camp chef because I would just be as big as a house. Like people would be coming in hungry and I'd be like, sorry folks, I ate most of it. 
And of course, no gumbo is complete without okra. Get that in there, get that stirred in. All right, guys, check that out. Everything is in together. The flavors are melding right now. It is just simmering. Oh, and it smells so delicious. I cannot wait to give this a taste. My mouth's watering. YouTube fam, look at that. That is beautifully cooked. Smells just delicious. The consistency is not quite as thick as a stew, I would say. But, well, yeah, maybe a stew would be a good way to um, describe the consistency of my gumbo. Now, how I'm going to be serving it up is over a bed of actually cilantro and lime flavored rice. Wanted to kind of throw a little curveball in there. Wanted to add a little bit of zest. So we're just going to take a nice big old spoonful of that, ladle it over. I think gumbo is obviously the best served over something. Uh, it's, it's pretty hearty by itself. I mean, it, you, it's like a stew, so you could eat it by itself. But, oh man, look at that. Oh, let's get into that. All right, guys, here goes nothing. Let's get a little crawdad, a little sausage. Ooh, a little bit of catfish right there. Oh, lost my catfish. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. The catfish is perfectly cooked. It's like this firm, but yet flaky consistency. If you undercook the catfish, then it's just this kind of weird, mushy, not, not good at all. And I can tell it had been soaked in that Sprite. The crawdads are per cooked perfectly. I mean, look at that. Nice crawdad tail right there. Mm. All the veggies are cooked perfectly too. Got the onion, got the pepper, got the sausage. There's still crunch to that onion and the pepper. It's not all mushy. Oh, and the flavors. Mmm. Ooh, hot. Mm. Mm, hot. Mm. Yeah, hot. 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 Mm. 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 Wash it all down with a little bit of a Sprite and cherry grenadine mixture. I believe we the people call that a Shirley Temple, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, ice cold. I'm getting that kick from the rice too, that lime. Fabulous. YouTube family, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please mash that subscribe button. Hope you get busy living. Hope you've been crushing summer. I mean, we're already over halfway through August. I mean, summer's on its deathbed here. And I'm just trying to milk every little bit out of it as I can. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.